If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Restructuring of Nigeria takes center stage at a summit by Igbo Social Cultural Group, Ahanez Indigo. Region seeks new constitution. Governors of Kaduna and Bayelsa states weigh in on the call for true federalism. So a plan will ensure stability of the nation as a coalition of northern groups caution region leaders on proposal. Former PDP spokesperson Ulisa Mitu collapses in court during trial in the case of alleged money laundering in Abuja as judge tackles prosecution and defense lawyers. And U.S. vows strongest sanctions ever imposed on Iran, says new measures will leave country economically paralyzed. Now, ChannelCV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash Channels Web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app and tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Well, let's take a look at some of the pictures that were sent in to us. We have one from the water bank area of Bariga in Lagos State, showing an ongoing construction site. Our eyewitness reporter is happy about the project, and he asked the state government to complete the work there quickly. And next is this image from Katsina Road in Kano State, showing the poor state of the road there. Our eyewitness reporter says that the residents woke up to see this, He's worried about the poor work done by the contractors, and he wants it done as well. And let's end with this image from Akuko Undo State, showing a vehicle which our eyewitness reporter says broke down owing to the poor state of the road. He claims this route has been abandoned by the government, bringing discomfort to the residents and commuters in the area, and he wants it fixed as soon as possible. Thanks for the pictures that you sent in. But well, just to let you know once again that it appears to be the end of the road for two out of the four suspected leaders of the criminal gang that carried out the deadly offer bank robbery last month. Kunle Ogunleye, also known as Arrow, and Michael Aduku were arrested at separate locations in Kwara State, where they allegedly carried out the robbery on April the 5th, leaving many dead. They were among the four men the police declared wanted on May the 4th, after labeling them the principal suspects in the robbery. The police force public relations officer Jimo Moshud said in a statement on Monday that Ogunleye was arrested on Sunday while Adiku was arrested two weeks ago. According to the statement, Adiku, a native of APA LGA in Benue State, is a dismissed police corporal and an ex-convict. The arrest brings to 22 the number of suspects the police have arrested in connection with the robbery. Let's take a look at some politics now. It's been weeks of intense internal politics in the All Progressives Congress as the party seeks to set up leadership across different levels. But that has come with a lot of controversy, and in most cases it's torn the party apart, leaving parallel congresses and perhaps a divided house. Tonight we bring you updates on some of the states that concluded their congresses, but still leaves a complex situation. The controversies trailing the APC Congresses continue. On Monday in Delta State, another Congress held with yet another group in the party. Heavy security presence and perhaps all the paraphernalia of an election set. Over 1,000 delegates from across the 25 local government areas of the state are here to vote. A former deputy chairman of the Delta State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, Thierry Ogodo, emerged as a new state chairman. Aside the chairmanship position, which was contested, other positions were returned unopposed after an affirmation voice voting exercise was confirmed by the delegates. That is democracy at work. And I tell you, when these people finish, the appeal committee will come to review what has been done. It's not a one-man take-it-all situation. And, and that's the difference. No impunity, no imposition. 
the River State amid its issues of legal tussle in what may go down as the earlier state congress conducted in recent times. The River State APC faction, allegedly loyal to the Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamichi, held a congress and as early as 6 a.m. they began accreditation of delegates. And in less than two hours, through a voice vote system, most of the officers were returned and a new state chairman and a person of Ujukai, Flagger Makri, was elected. In support of you, our members, in making sure that come to 2019, APC will be a recast. And to cross River State, a faction of the party have come out to outrightly reject what they describe as an improper APC State Congress that held in Calabar last Friday. They accused the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Usano Usani, to have gone ahead with the conduct of the exercise against party guidelines. One question to ask really is what did the national leadership of the party rely on? to order a state congress in Cross River. In a swift reaction, the minister insists that Congress follow due process with the backing from his national body and INEC. For them to say it's a nullity, well, I don't know why. Uh, because we are definitely obliging and obeying the rules of the party. It has been a series of crises and controversies over the conduct of the election and the All Progressive Congress. The coming days will now see the leadership of the party and the national burden with resolving the pile of issues raised. Shoa Kimale, Channels Television News. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Linda Akigwe. Linda. Hello, Ijoman. Welcome to Abuja. Now, we begin with the judiciary. In a dramatic turn of events, the former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Lusamitu, today collapsed during his resumed trial in an Abuja High Court. Mitu slipped and fell while trying to make his way to the dock when his case was called. In spite of the incident, the trial judge, Justice Okonabang, continued with the trial and only adjourned when a doctor examined and recommended the former PDP secretary's evacuation to a hospital. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, has a report. It's the resumed trial of the case of fraud against the former national publicity secretary of the PDP, Mr. Ulisamechi. No sooner had the court called his case and he attempted to make his way to the dock. Mr. Meta slipped and fell, prompting the trial judge, Justice Okonabang, to take a short recess whilst the defendant was still on the floor. On the court's resumption, 30 minutes later, the trial judge continued with the trial, even though Metu was still on the ground. However, Metu's counsel, Emeka Itiaba, in disapproval, withdrew from the trial. He said he could not go ahead with the trial when his client was laying on the ground, mourning in pain. Justice Abang have insisted that Metu's counsel should call his 11th witness in the trial, who then entered the dock. The judge also overruled the application by Metu's counsel, seeking to withdraw from the case, claiming that it was a ploy to frustrate the case. And just as he turned to the prosecution to continue with the cross-examination of the witness, a medical doctor of the Federal High Court approached the bench and spoke to the trial judge. The judge then asked both counsel if they were opposed to the application by the doctor, to which the prosecutor answered in the negative. However, counsel to Matu informed the court that he was no longer a party to the suit. So it wasn't an issue of not being ready for trial, continuation of trial. The court insisted that I should call my witness. I called my witness and I said to the court, at this point, I will withdraw from this trial because I cannot be representing a man whose health status I don't know. I don't know whether he's alive or he's dead. But before the adjournment, Justice Abang was also furious at the prosecution for not opposing the application for an adjournment. According to him, if the prosecution does not want to proceed with the trial, the court will strike out the case. The prosecutor explains why he did not object to the application. The Administration of Criminal Justice Act is clear. A defendant can only stand trial while he's before the court. Now, if the medical personnel had said or given an opinion to the Honorable Court that he needed to be evacuated to the hospital and I'm asked 
to comment, what would I say naturally? Going by the law, I will have to say I'm not opposed. Although the trial has been adjourned to the 22nd yes, of May, it remains to be seen whether the defendant will appear in court alongside his counsel, who insists he has withdrawn. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. Away from the judiciary, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo has asked the Boundaries Commission to re-engineer the nation's border policies. Professor Oshibajo suggested managing the nation's borders with a view to creatively establishing new ways of operations and appropriately deal with issues of boundary disputes, communal clashes and smuggling among others. The vice president was speaking at a retreat for stakeholders on the management of Nigeria's boundaries in Abuja. What happens along these borders greatly affect what happens within them. And all you need is a cursory look at the daily news headlines to realize just how much of the issues they embody are determined by the activities taking place across our land and maritime borders and boundaries. Whether it is smuggling or oil bunkering, illegal oil bunkering, or the impact of undocumented immigration on the security situation, especially in the north central uh, states of Nigeria, Permit me to mention that the role of the Commission, given the numerous border challenges, has to be more creative and innovative. Every nation attends to the peculiarities of its border issues with solutions that are nuanced, that are smart, affordable and result-oriented. We simply cannot afford to do the things that we've been doing for so many years and expect different results. It is time to re-engineer our border, our, all of our border policies, and I believe that this is the paramount responsibility of this commission, and we trust that you will deliver. Now side of Nigeria, a 36-year-old Nigerian man, Christopher Omoike, has jumped to his death from the ninth floor apartment of a high-rise in Johannesburg, allegedly in an attempt to avoid arrest. There are still conflicting accounts of the events that led to the invitation of the police to his apartment. But his flatmate, a Nigerian man, and his girlfriend say he was trying to avoid arrest following an alleged violent attack on a Nigerian lady who has a child for him. The Nigerian Consul, Consul General Godwin Adama visited the scene of the incident on the invitation of Independent Police Investigative Directorate. And when the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's economy maintains strong growth despite 0.16% decline in the first quarter of 2018. That's some business news. Please join us again.